Hi everyone, in this tutorial we are going to be making a calendar and I'm really really excited to do this because I think it's going to turn out beautiful. I got this beautiful frame from Marshall's Home Goods and I love it. This is the second one I've bought. I bought one last summer and um, I did a really pretty scripture writing on the glass and then I intentionally left the back of the, um, the picture backing off so that the wall could just shine through the glass. So it's really pretty. It's like a floating frame and it hangs in my dining room. It's so pretty. You can just see the gray wall behind the glass. It's so pretty. So when I stumbled upon this frame again, um, I wanted to get another one because it's just a really pretty piece in my home, but I didn't want to do the same thing. So I wanted to do a little something different. So I'm going to be making a calendar out of this, um, little frame here. And I think it's going to look really, really cool. So we're going to need a variety of materials today. And it's also going to be a little bit more project in steps today. So, um, this is going to be really fun. I think it's a wonderful way to kind of step up our crafting. And, um, I'm really excited to see the final product because I've been envisioning it in my head for a while now and so now I really am ready to see the final result. So in terms of um, items that you're going to need, you're of course going to need a picture frame. You're going to need um, scraping tool or squeegee tool and a weeding tool, um, scissors, some hot glue, and then um, some masking transfer tape or transfer tape of your choice. You're also going to need some scrapbook paper and I'll show you why in just a second. And then you're going to need some vinyl. I'm going to be using white vinyl and I'm going to be using Oracle 651 permanent vinyl. So this is the vinyl I'll be using and it has more of a glossy finish. Okay, I think that is it in terms of supplies. Like always, I do tend to sneak things into my um, filming because sometimes I totally forget to grab something um, when I'm setting up. So always utilize the description box below because I will definitely be putting all of the material I use down there. That way you can recreate this look at your craft table. All right, and all, as always, please be sure you are subscribed. There's a lot of fun things coming up on the channel and I don't want you to miss out. So make sure you hit that button and come join a along. Okay, so now as um, our first step, what I did was with the um, glass, I did clean it with some glass cleaner because as you can imagine, it came from the store pretty filthy. So what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to glue the glass into the frame and I'll show you why. So let me go ahead and set my glass aside and then I'm going to flip my frame upside down. Now you'll notice when I flip it that my clasps are um, up here. So it's going to hang the other way. So I'm just going to have to move these this way. Quite honestly, I'm not going to because I'm going to have this kind of lean in like lean against the wall on a table and not necessarily hang it on a wall. Another option is you could apply ribbon in between these little um, scalloped edges and you could hang it with ribbon and that would be super pretty too. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I am going to place my glass in here and I'll show you what I mean here. The glass is substantially smaller than the actual opening. So what that means for our project is that it wouldn't matter if you just put a picture in here because the picture would stay, you know, where it needs to be. But since we're applying a design on the glass and that design needs to be centered at all times, we need the glass to stay in the same place at all times. So what I'm meaning by that is once we get our vinyl on here, we don't want this glass, you know, flipping and sliding all over the place because it's going to uncenter our vinyl and then it's not going to look really nice. So what I'm going to do is I am going to place a little bead of glue, of hot glue along this bottom edge down here and then I'm going to place the glass on top of it and then I'll just probably put like a dot here and a dot here. So let me do that really quick. Let me get this glass back out. It's kind of being a stinker. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry if my head flips into the scene a couple times. This is definitely a bigger project, so it's going to film a little bit differently. Okay, so I'm just going to apply just a string of glue down here really quickly. Okay, and then one here, one here. Okay, so now I'm just going to lay this down really fast. Perfect. And perfect. 
that one kind of missed the mark a little bit, but that is plenty. Okay, so now this is just gonna prevent that glass from sliding around. So once we get our vinyl on here, it's gonna stay centered at all times. So I would recommend that step. Okay. Perfect, okay, so I'm just gonna let that dry for a second. Okay, so now the next step is, if you'll notice, this is, if we measure our opening, let me find my measuring tape. So I'm just gonna measure this inner opening right here. If you measure it, it is a standard picture size of 13 by 10. So again, just this inner inner side is 10 by 13. So when you are using scrap paper, you'll know that scrap of paper comes 12 by 12. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna pick up one piece, but you're also gonna wanna pick up a separate, separate piece, um, a second piece, because you're gonna want to um, cut a little bit so that you have a little bit of extra. So now I had to um, cut just another piece of paper and I'm just going to tape it together and it will flawlessly end up looking like one piece. So let me go ahead and get that all taped up and then we'll place it inside our frame and we'll get going. Okay, so you guys probably noticed I had grabbed the wrong size sheet. The other sheet was the one I cut this piece off of. So now this is the size, let's see, I think it goes this way. This is the sh uh, 12 by 12 that I have. And then this is the one inch that I cut off of my second piece to put them together. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna flip these over and this is beautifully double-sided. I'll also share where it's from. This is the Martha Stewart paper pack. You guys know that it sneaks its way into just about every video that I have that includes paper because it's so pretty. It's from Michaels. It's um, so fun to work with. It's perfect for spring. So it's a nice, um, that's just a nice variety of pretty patterns that really, really go with my style. Okay, so I'm just going to line these up and I'm just gonna use some scotch tape um, for this and get them really close. So now I'm making a 12 by 13 piece. Now you can also buy it like poster board that is patterned at your craft store. Um, I know Hobby Lobby definitely has some and if you want, you know, if you find a pattern that you really like and you don't want to do this step of, you know, putting pieces of paper together to extend the paper size. Um, but I didn't have a bigger um, option at home. And I, when I saw this kind of ombre color, color um, design, it was perfect for what I'm going for. I think it's going to be super, super nice. So I'm just attaching those. Okay, and so then when I flip it, it extends the piece of paper this way for me. Okay, so now between the two, I'm liking how this tra this part transitions more than this. So I'm going to have to cut off in about an inch anyway. So I'm going to opt to cut the bottom just because I don't think this looks as great as the upper part. I think the other part, upper part looks really good. So um, I'm just going to cut a little bit away. And again, this does not have to be a perfect line because it's just hiding right behind that frame. So don't stress about, you know, getting it super perfect. Let's see, did I get quite enough off of there? I did, okay, perfect. So now what that's gonna do is that's just gonna lay inside the frame, just like that. Okay, perfect. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna place a tiny piece of tape on either side just to hold my paper in place. Okay. Okay. So now I'm just going to replace this on the back. Position these little guys. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I am just going to flip this over. And then that is my final look on the back. Okay, so there is 
where, where I'm going with this. So now, before I move forward, I wanted to mention there are two ways to apply the vinyl. So you can either, step one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply the vinyl to the top. Um, I just think it looks really, really cool. Um, it kind of gives it a dimensional effect and I decided that that is how I'm gonna do it. Now, if you want, you can apply the vinyl underneath so that it is under the glass and shining through. If you decide to do that, you will want to mirror your image in design space so that it prints backwards so that when you apply it and then flip your glass over, it is showing the right side. Um, again, for mine and for this tutorial, I'm gonna be putting it on top, um, but I just wanted to give you the option should you wanna do it the other way. Okay, so again, we are working with a 10 by 13 space in here, so we're gonna hop into design space and get everything designed and get our calendar all designed, and then I will get it cut for you and applied, and we will finally see the finished product. We're in design space, and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just create my 10 by 13 surface space, whoops, this is images, um, surface base that I'm going to be working with. So I'm just gonna go to the shapes box and grab a square. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unlock it cause it's not gonna remain a perfect square. And I'm gonna have it a width of 13 and a height by 10. And I'm just typing in those exact dimensions up here in the size box. So when I hit enter, I do that. And I am going to just make this nice pink color cause that's gonna just kind of look like the background that we have. Um, now I'm gonna go to images and I am just going to search calendar and they have nice grids already made for you so they have a variety this circle one is really cute too I was kind of tempted but I'm gonna go for something a little bit more um, traditional I think so now um, I think the circle one would be pretty but since my frame is so flowy um, I think that it needs to be paired with something a little bit more um, um, I think it needs to be paired with, sorry, <laughs> I think I'm doing too many things at once. I think it needs to be paired with something a little bit more like block and traditional. So um, that's why I'm gonna go that way. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna unlock this. Let's color this white just so we can really see. Plus it's gonna be out of white vinyl. And I'm gonna unlock this and I'm just gonna start kind of sizing it how I'm gonna want it. So I'm thinking just about like this maybe just a tad smaller okay this is where I'm gonna go with this so I'm gonna lock that okay and now what I'm gonna do is I am going to type um, with the text box I'm going to add my little Sunday Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday um, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to grab my text and I am going to just start writing them individually. Now the um, font that I'm gonna be using is called Basecamp. So I'm gonna go up here and just type Basecamp in. It's this top one. Okay, so for the first one, obviously Sunday. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I will just, let's see, it has like all these layers with it. So I can just delete those so that I can color this nice white color. Okay, now I'm just going to size this down and place here. I'm going to make that a little bit smaller. I kind of want them to be like right side justified. I think it would be kind of neat. So it's not going to be completely centered in the square. So now once I have the first one done and how I want it, I'm just going to come up here and duplicate it. That way the next one that I create, whoops, the next one that I create is going to be, um, the exact same size and everything. So I'm gonna double click it, and the next one I'll just say Monday. Did I do this? No, you know what I was doing? I wasn't doing a full word. Sorry, I'm thinking back to what I did. I just did S, that's right. Okay, I was gonna say, these are looking rather big. So you can do whatever you want. Again, do whatever you guys like, um, but I can even make that a little bit bigger now that I don't have a full word. Okay. So S and then duplicate. Um, and again, yes, write the whole word out if you'd like, but I am going to do it this way. I think it's gonna look really nice. Okay, so now that I have all of them, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use my command button on my Mac and I'm gonna grab all of my days of the week and I am going to go align bottom. So now they are all the same um, distance away from the grid. 
Um, and now I'm just going to make sure that I like their spacing. I do. Okay, so that looks good to my eye. I'm double checking. Yep, okay, so that looks good. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to weld my letters to my grid because I want all of them. I just spent all that time making sure that they were spaced correctly and that they were all spaced um, the same distance away from the grid. I want to make sure now that they all cut together. So I'm just going to actually, I think it'll be easier over here. I'm going to use my command button and I'm going to select all of my layers except for that pink layer. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to click weld. Let me make sure everything's good. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay. I could totally see myself accidentally mixing those up um, just out of tiredness. So I'm just going to double check before I weld. So I'm going to weld. And now everything is all together. So this is all one piece, which means I can lay it down in all one piece, which is going to be a blessing. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide this pink box. I'm going to be using my maker today, so I'm going to make sure my maker is selected. It might be too big for the joy, just for those. Yeah, so you could do this on a smaller scale for the joy, but this cut is too big to fit through the joy. So just wanted to let you know if I have any um, joy users out there that you can just make it smaller. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go to make it, and I'm going to need to turn on my Cricut. I forgot to do that, so let me get that turned on in the background. And so now, this is the part here that I was kind of talking about in terms of how you want to apply your vinyl to the glass. So once again, I am going to be applying mine to the top of the glass. So it is going to have a raised surface. So um, I will print mine just like this. If you want to apply your vinyl to the bottom of the glass and have do not and not have a raised surface and you want it to shine through the glass or show through the glass you're going to want to click mirror because then it will print upside down and then once you go to apply it to your design it will it will apply right side up if that makes sense so this is the way you're going to want to do it should you want to do it under your glass so i'm going to go ahead and click off because again, I'm gonna do it right side up. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click continue. And now it's gonna locate my maker and I can go ahead and make my um, material selection. So now I can just say that I'm using vinyl and I'm gonna use default pressure and I'm gonna go ahead and load my mat into my machine with my vinyl on it and we will get to cutting. Okay, so now I'm just loading my vinyl onto my mat and I'm just gonna really Press that down to make sure there are no bubbles and that it goes smoothly onto the mat for cutting. Okay, and I'll time this for you guys so you guys know, just out of interest, how long it takes to cut that calendar. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the load button, which is just the double arrows right here. And then once it starts flashing the Cricut button, just like this, I can press it and then it is all ready to cut. Just a little bit. Okay, so here is the design and I'm just going to start weeding it and you know what you guys while this was cutting Oh, it probably took about five minutes to cut. Okay, so while this was cutting I had a major new idea for this. Okay, so I'll show you in a minute. Let me get um, This weeded out and then I'll show you The major light bulb moment that I just had. I'm kind of embarrassed. That I didn't think of it before but the the good thing is I thought of it before my final project. So we are going to apply this completely differently to our calendar than originally thought. Okay, so I've got, those look so awesome. I've got this all down. Okay, so now I'm going to just grab those little squares. And this is going to be so quick and easy. I love that Design Space already has a grid for a calendar pre-made because I was thinking about how to make this myself and it's so doable but it's just a time a time sucker so I was uh if ever in doubt just type in that search box and more likely than not you can probably find exactly what you need okay just finishing up the last few that was super easy okay just removing my scrap pieces now, um, in terms of transfer tape, we are going to need to do two different sections. 
because our transfer tape is not quite white enough. So I'm just going to do this in two different little sections. Um, and with this transfer tape, it overlaps really nice. Um, and you can do t use two pieces at once, so it works perfectly. Now, for this next step, if you choose to do it like I do and not place it directly on the glass, you are definitely going to need um, this transfer tape because it's just a very light grip. So I would 100% recommend you pick up a roll of this. I'll link it below. Um, it's through Expressions Vinyl and they have um, a couple different sizes that you can pick from. So it's amazing. And it works on just about everything. I use it on pretty much every project I have. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my squeegee tool and I'm just going to press down and start encouraging that vinyl to transfer from that blue carrier sheet that it was cut on over to the transfer tape so that I can pull it up and this is how we will transfer it to our project. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys what I changed. You guys might be thinking that you are already thinking it behind the scenes. So if you were, oh my goodness, bravo. I might need like two more sips of coffee, I think. Because I think the more coffee I drink, the better my, my uh, ideas are getting here. Okay, so do you guys remember how I put the paper in the glass and had the backing all put on and everything? Well, while this was cutting, I really started thinking about it and... I totally am going a different direction. So what I'm going to do is I took the paper back out and I am going to apply this to the paper. And I'm going to tell you why. The reason I am going to do this is because when you apply, you're going to be using dry erase marker on your glass. But in order to remove dry erase, you have to spray glass cleaner or use some type of damp method to really get it off. So I was starting to think if I put this on top of the glass, then it's really going to start ruining the vinyl to have glass cleaner on it or water on it. It's just going to start uh, water. It could probably handle because it's permanent. And so this is the same thing that I would use on like a coffee mug when you know you're making a mug so permanent vinyl is good, but glass cleaner kind of had me stumped. I think that it would probably not do as well and I don't want to risk it because I'm putting a lot of work into this so I decided that I am going to put it on my um, paper and then have my paper shine through now again yes you can mirror this and put it underneath the glass so it shines through so you can still apply it to the glass underneath by mirroring it however when you do that sometimes you can see some bubbles underneath between the vinyl and the glass um sometimes if your execution is not like flawless and perfect so to avoid risking that i'm just going to put it on the paper like that's just seems like a very logical step so if you guys are giggling behind the scenes and thinking, Beth, I was totally one step ahead of you, then I'm really proud of you. <laughs> but if not, then um, maybe think about doing it this way. So now I'm just removing that backing off. Oracle 651 vinyl is a complete dream to work with. I love it. Okay, so now I'm going to be super careful and get this laid down. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make a very straight line at the bottom of my grid. My eye center tends to center the tape instead of the design. So I like the edges of my tape to be pretty spot on. I'm going to do it to this side too. Does that make sense? Um, it's just how my little mind works. It just tends to work, uh, use, use that one centering. So I'm just going to help my eye along there. Okay. So I'm going to pull up my design in design space. Cause I kind of had it centered all perfectly on design space 
with my surrounding box that I created. Do you remember when I created that shapes box? Okay, so I want to just look at that. I think I have it about an inch away from the bottom and an inch away from the sides. Okay, so I'm working on honestly laying down that bottom part first. I'm about an inch and a quarter and an, ooh, am I good? An inch and a quarter and an inch and a quarter. Okay, so I think I am super, super close to a perfect look here. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay that down. Got a little bit of a bubble right here, so let me. Now this is why this part um, this is why you're going to want to use a masking transfer tape because it's very light grip and it works with paper um, better than it than like a strong grip tape because once you go to um, apply down your or you I'm sorry once you go to rip up your transfer tape um, regular transfer tape is going to rip your paper so you're going to want to use this. So now we can just peel away. How cool is that? So I have one little bubble here. There we go, already taken care of. If you have any bubbles that happen to come up, just use your fingernail or grab your squeegee or scraper tool and just grab that and just push them towards the edge and they will come right out. Perfect. Okay, now the second piece. So you see how that works so much better on paper. Works really good. And it's not ripping it at all. And I applied a lot of pressure with that scraping tool when I scraped this down. So I wasn't gentle. Um, I mean, I might have been a little gentle, but... Um, I kind of did the same as I normally do. So, okay, so a couple tiny little bubbles that will pop out. All right. And then there is our calendar. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get our frame and get it inserted back in there. And we're gonna see it all come together. I think it's gonna be really cute. Okay, so now I'm just laying this down inside of my frame. Make sure it's all in there. Might need to come up a little bit on this side. There we go. And the best thing about this is if it's not perfectly straight, you can kind of just keep looking under and checking. Looks great. Okay. Um, and then repositioning it just how you need it. Okay. So now the back part is just going to go right in here. I think the pretty um, square nature of the calendar is going to look super nice with the flowy um, look of the frame. Okay. So now let me turn this over. And the, oh my goodness, it's so cool. I love how that turned out. It looks really, really neat. That's exactly what I wanted. And I love that ombre watercolory look. And this actually um, kind of worked over here because it kind of placed that um, grid line on that seam. So that looks really, really awesome. Oh, I love how it turned out. What do you guys think? Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit so you guys can see a little bit better. All right, so here's the final look. I'm super excited about it. It looks really perfect and it's exactly what I wanted. So that's always really exciting. So um, now what you can do, again, um, I think I honestly love this method that I use by putting it on the paper. Again, there's three ways you can do it. You can apply it on top to the glass. You can apply it, um, mirror it and apply it underneath the glass. Again, you risk having bubbles, which could kind of compromise your design or the um, aesthetic of your design. Um, or you can do it this way um, and place it on the paper, which 
ensures that it's still under the glass, but that you're not going to see any bubbles because any of the bubbles that you're going to have are going to be underneath it and it's not going to really matter. So I honestly would recommend this way. Um, again, if you do put it on the glass and you go to put the glass cleaner on it to get your marker off, um, it could compromise the vinyl. So fair warning on that. You can, I'm going to be using this little visa -vis. I can't remember if that, I can't remember if that's what you say, but do you guys remember these when your math teacher used to use these on the overhead? <laughs> That always reminds me of that. It's kind of a nostalgic little marker, isn't it? Um, so I'm just going to use that. So then you can just write in your numbers each month. One, two, three. And it really does a cool, um, almost shadowy effect because it's on glass. And then you can use glass cleaner to get it all off and erase it. Again, you can also put your month up here. So it'll be really fun. And if you are um, excited about the changing of seasons and you want to get really fun with your calendar, you can apply different paper and change out your paper. Oh, I guess you can't really if you do it this way um, because I applied this to the paper. But um, if you did the glass method, you could kind of change out your paper, or if you just wanted to, you know, make a couple, you can make four of these backgrounds on different paper, um, and then just switch them out throughout the year. That would be fun too. So anyway, you can just kind of have a lot of fun with it. So I'd love to hear what you guys think. This has been a really fun project to make, um, behind the scenes. It has been a project that has kept me thinking. So it's been really, really fun. I hope you guys really enjoyed this. I really enjoyed creating it and I think that it turned out really beautiful. So if you want to see more of what's coming to the craft channel, make sure you are all subscribed. And as always, if you enjoyed this, I would love if you would give a thumbs up and leave a comment if you guys feel inclined to. All right, guys, I hope you have a wonderful week and I'll see you in the next video.